Hello everyone, so today we are going to start a new series of video which will deal with ancient Indian history. So today we'll have a brief introduction and then we'll deal with the prehistory. So first of all, we'll have a brief introduction. So in this video series, we are going to deal with the ancient Indian history till the medi uh, medieval Indian history. Okay, so we'll deal first with prehistory of India, then we'll move to Harappan period and then we'll move to Buddhism and Jainism, the advent of Buddhism and Jainism, then the Mauryan Empire, and then we'll deal with Ashoka separately, and then we'll move to uh, things like Gupta Empire and also Sangam literature in the south, and then again we'll move to Harsvardhan era and all. So we are going to deal with each and every topic of ancient history, but we'll like to have your cooperation. And what is that cooperation? You will have to give us support us and how you can support us by sharing this video more and more so that we will be encouraged to make more videos as our views will increase we will be making more videos okay so please do share it with your friends and also subscribe to this channel so let us come to the utility of ancient history so what is the utility of this so a lot of question has been asked from this topic in UPSC prelims as well as mains. There are questions in GS1 in mains also. So it is very important as far as UPSC is concerned. Apart from UPSC, questions are asked in SSC CGL. So if you are giving a chance uh, on this examination, you should prepare this well. Then NDA and CDS, if you are preparing, then also it becomes important. And there are many other examinations like uh, State Public Service Commission and SBI PO and other PO examination, banking examination. In that also, few questions are always asked from ancient Indian history. That is why it is very much important to have an holistic uh, approach towards the study of ancient Indian history. Okay, so today we will be dealing with prehistory of Indian continent. So let us start. So prehistory of India. Here, <clears throat> before we start our study of ancient Indian history, it is imperative to have some knowledge of prehistory and evolution of human beings and hominids. Okay, so we will deal here. So you don't need to get confused or don't get fear of these terms. Just listen it once. If you can remember, it's fine. If you can't, it's uh, don't bother that much. Okay. So basically the geological history that has been divided into three things. What are those? The very first thing is era and then we have period and era will have period and a period will have epoch. Okay. So basically we have four era and what are those era? The very first era is pre-Cambian era. Then we have Paleozoic era, then Mesozoic era. So later on you will be studying Paleolithic age, then Mesolithic age. So you can remember like this Pre Cambrian era, then Paleozoic era, then Mesozoic era, and the last era, which is the present era, that is Cenozoic era. So this you should remember once. If it's uh, okay with you, then it's fine. Then one small point that uh, this Jurassic period that came under Mesozoic era. So there are a lot of periods. I have, I have not written all those periods because you will get confused. I have just written only which are important. Okay. Now we are in Cenozoic era. In Cenozoic era, there are different periods, Quaternary period and Tertiary period. In Tertiary period, what started <coughs> the Tertiary period after the uh, after the <coughs> Jurassic age, the dinosaurs they went and then the mammal they dominated the earth. So initial mammals were huge in size, very huge. Okay, so in the tertiary era, in quaternary era, what happened? The size of mammal decreased and uh, that quaternary era has been further divided into epoch. And what are those epoch? One is Paleistocene epoch in which uh, most of the development of hominid will happen. And then Holocene epoch, which is the present day. So you should remember at least these two things that is Paleistocene and Holocene. Okay, is that clear? Now, one more point, how humans have developed. So initially, as I said that uh, during tertiary period, mammals dominated the earth. Okay, 
so mammals uh, from mammals one of the sub uh, set of mammals are these primates okay and one of the subset of primates are apes so initially we all were apes but uh, during some 6 million years ago uh, the hum hominids they separated from apes so that will deal in this table and what happened consequently so initially primates we all were primates then uh, there was a uh, separation from apes of hominid that happened 6 million years ago okay and what are the hominoids uh, these are the name of the different hominoids the very first hominoids were australopithecines so uh, australopithecines was the first hominid or human like uh, you can say ape uh, who was bipedal and that uh, the fossil of uh, this australopithecine has been found which dates to 4.4 million years ago in africa okay and, and they were bipedal that means they used to walk on two legs okay this is very important and then then came homo habilis homo habilis also occupied the area of africa only they were confined to africa only near kenya and tanzania near uh, nearly two million years ago so they they were very efficient in using their grip and hands so homo habilis basically means hand using uh, hominids okay then came homo erectus so homo erectus they came around 1.5 million years ago in east africa and these were the hominids which dispersed from africa to different continent so that is why it is very much important and after ho uh, homo erectus came neanderthal man so <coughs> neander there is a doubt regarding ne neanderthal man so uh, many people say that they were different species which became extinct while many people say that we humans have been evolved from Neanderthal men. So there is doubt over it. Okay. So if you might have watched this movie called Night in uh, a Museum. So there, uh, there are some characters which are Neanderthal men. Okay. So you can remember like this. Then the last one is the Homo sapiens sapien, which is also called the thinking man, which are the present human beings. So this is the story of Homo nids how ho ho human beings developed okay so here you can see the homo erectus they started their journey from africa towards different continent and that happened in phases 60000 year ago and then 45000 year ago and then you have 55000 year ago they went to australia and many people has have this doubt that how humans they came to america or south america so you can uh, you must have been knowing about this Bering Strait so from Siberia they went to Bering Strait and from there they crossed the sea and they came to America or South America so this is how this uh, dispersal of human beings happened so this is important to uh, have a basic knowledge so the same fact has been tabulated here as the men grew uh, as the men developed the size of their brain increased and the spinal cord also became uh, quite S-shaped like this okay so uh, spinal also developed so here you can see the same thing okay australopithecines then homo habilis then homo erectus and then homo sapien and then homo sapiens sapiens which is the present human being okay so having studied this we'll uh, see some more things what are those things See, basically we are going to study about the human civilization. Now that we have some knowledge of human evolution, we will study some important phases of human activities which ultimately lead to establishment of civilization like Indus Valley civilization and Egyptian civilization and all. So we will study in the next video about Indus Valley civilization. But before that civilization came into being, there was some development and that development is very much important to understand then only we can understand how the civilization approached or came into being so uh, very first thing which uh, was discovered was fire after this uh, homo uh, human beings developed they discovered fire then domestication 
and then they discovered wheel and then they started once wheel was discovered they started making pots and cart so this is a small thing we will discuss it later in detail so now we are coming to indian subcontinent the history of human settlement in indian subcontinent goes back to prehistoric time there are sign of uh, prehistoric men here okay but uh, not of uh, not before uh, not the very early men who were confined to africa only so the sign of humans in indian subcontinent is quite late after this uh, migration happened then only we have some uh, evidences and the very first men which came to india most probably they came through sea route or they came in deccan okay so this you should be knowing hathnara is a place in De uh, deccan hathnara uh, so there is the evidence of first human habitation okay so we'll come to know everything one by one the history of human settlement in india goes back to prehistoric times plenty of archaeological evidences are available like stone tools pottery art artifacts and metal tools used by prehistoric people throughout the subcontinent except indus valley and ganga valley because during that period uh, at the place of uh, the northern plain there was a shallow sea okay and which was gradually filled with the alluvial deposit which was brought by the rivers indus and ganga okay and that is why the northern plain is said to be the latest geological feature of indian subcontinent so no evidence has been found here but we have evidences elsewhere so there was a shallow ocean at the place of northern plain which was subsequently filled with alluvial deposits from the river to form the northern plain which is recent geological origin now in india prehistory is divided into various phases and what are those those are paleolithic age mesolithic age neolithic age paleolithic mesolithic and neolithic age and the last age is metallic age which is also called chalcolithic age and which is basically harappan civilization so we will deal with it separately so however these ages were not uniform throughout india that means <coughs> there are still some areas in india like andaman nicobar where you have jarawa tribes who lives still in paleolithic age so the we can't say that on this particular Uh, uh date this uh, era started or that era started the age we are simultaneously existing okay so what are the techniques used to study or date uh, these things so there are various techniques and these are important you should know about these and if possible you can google it the very first one is radio carbon dating which most of you will be knowing then dendrochronology which also most of you will be knowing then paleo magnetic method is also one method and then thermo luminescence method is also one method so these are some of the technique which are used to date uh, the stone age tools etc so now we'll come to factory site what is factory site so ancient human they used to make stone tools so the place where they used to chip their stone so that place is basically called factory site places where tools were made and there were also habitation come factory sites what were those places of habitation which were also factory sites okay so there are some places where people used to live also and that was used as factory site also so as we discussed earlier that we have divided the uh, stone age so to say stone age of india into three parts that is paleolithic age and mesolithic age and neolithic age the paleolithic age can be further divided into three parts but we'll not go in that detail because that is a wastage of time okay and, and nobody will ask you about that detail okay so basically paleolithic age so what we need to learn here is what were the type of tools so the tools were big which can be gripped in hand and which can be used to attack uh, animals okay so you can see and they were made of quartzite by chipping off and making one end sharper as you can see so these were the tools and what were the primary activities the primary activity of these people were hunting and gathering fruits okay so this was the primary activity and, and they used to 
live a nomadic life there was no sedentary life at that time so some of the very important sites which are very much important you should remember these sites are son valley and the potwar plateau so this son valley is located in pakistan at Pot uh, ne very near to potwar plateau the potwar plateau is the same plateau where takshila university is located okay then shivalik hill in north india is also one of the paleolithic site and then bhim betka in madhya pradesh basically bhim betka is a site which is paleolithic also mesolithic also and neolithic also and then you have adamgarh hills near narmada valley that is also a paleolithic site then you have kurnool caves in andhra pradesh this is the first site where evidences of fire has been found okay ashes has been found to so, kurnool cave you should remember then atiram pakkam near chennai is also a paleolithic site in south india and that is why it is very much important it might be asked and these are the information from tamil nadu uh, textbook and also from ncert and other books uh, so you should remember this these are very much important this can be asked then we'll come to mesolithic period during mesolithic period what happened there was a change what was that change there was a change in the tools the tools become very small in size and these are called microlithic tools they were hardly 5 cm small and they were joined together like this to form a scissors type of thing or uh, 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 they were uh, joined together and they were uh, used to cut uh, some leather etc uh, or hide it etc okay so microlith were <coughs> uh, frequently used then hunting gathering continued and together with hunting and gathering they also started fishing and domesticating animals and what was the first animal to be domesticated that was dog wild dog so that was first and then later on they started domesticating uh, domesticating sheep then goats and then cattle okay some of the mesolithic sites are bhimbetka adamgarh and mahgara mahgara is near up belan valley okay then in neolithic age there was a revolution uh, which is also known as neolithic revolution or uh, or uh, agricultural revolution so we will discuss that also later on so uh, in this period the tools became polished okay those were very polished and handles were attached to it like you can see here some uh, in some cases bones were used basically in kurnool caves or near kurnool caves bone were uh, used very much and uh, you can see some of the tools of that period here so they are more refined and food production started for the first time agriculture started for the first time animal and plant domestication started and what are some of the important sites the very first site is koldi hawa near belan valley up near i think ajamgarh okay and this was the site where rice was very uh, uh, cultivated for the first time and then we have mehargarh which was a small village in pakistan then halur halur is in karnataka and payampalli is in tamil nadu i guess or andhra and then dau jali hadin which is located near garo hills near uh, in the northeast so this is also an important site so these are some of the information we will deal uh, in detail later okay now to hunt animal catch fish or birds people need to be alert they were very alert quick and have lots of presence of mind to collect plant produce you need to find which part of plant can be eaten and which cannot which are poisonous so they had to made a lot of effort to survive now this map has been taken from ncert class 6 and this is very much important because a lot of site has been shown here which are important the very first burja home which is in kashmir and here pit uh, house were found okay then mehargarh which uh, it is in the area where indus valley civilization will flourish afterwards okay then chirand is a site in uh, bihar and then koldi hawa is a site in up where rice was first cultivated then mahagara is also adjacent to it then bhimbetka is a site uh, famous for rock shelter caves and then you have uh, kurnool cave where uh, where fire was first found then hansgi is also important site and halur is also important 
Payampalli and Adichanalur is also important. So you should remember all these sites. And then Inamgaon is also a village which is important for burials. And then here in northeast you have Dao Jali Hadeng. So these sites are very much important. So you should go through this uh, image once more by yourself and note down all the important sites uh, at least. Okay. So after this, around this is important. This you should understand. Around twelve thousand years ago, there started something. The temperature of the earth uh, before this uh, twelve thousand year ago there was a glaciation. That is, there was ice age. So after that ice age, um, around twelve thousand year ago, there were major changes in climate of the world, with a shift to relatively warmer condition. The climate grew warmer. Okay, in many areas, this led to development of grassland. So due to warm climate, grasses develop. This in turn led to an increase in number of deer, antelope, goat, sheep, cattle. So this led to two consequences. What are those two consequences? The very first one is that as the number of deer, antelope, goat, sheep, cattle increase, human started domesticating these animals, and human basically became herders. Okay, this is the very first thing. The second thing which is important is as the grasses grew, grasses all also included wheat and barley and rice. So human also started cultivation of wheat, barley, rice. So this is also very much important, and this would have not happened ha if the temperature would have not increased. So that is why it is important. So there is a uh, <coughs> small point that is some of the rock paintings are very much important, which are found at Bhim Betka, then Lakhudiyar in Uttarakhand, then Adamgarh near Narmada River, and then Vindhya Mountains. Okay, and a small point uh, point also is given in NCRT, which is ostriches in India, which says that. Ostriches were found in India during the Paleolithic period. Large quantity of ostrich egg cell were found at Patne in Maharashtra. Designs were engraved on some pieces, while beads were also made out of them. So ostriches are now found in Australia, but they were once found in India also. So how it is possible? So the a possible explanation for this is India was a part of Gondwana land initially. And uh, when it was a part of Gondwana land, then Austro Australia was also adjacent to it. So, <coughs> ostrich uh, might have uh, existed in India as well at, during that period, but later on it got extinct from India. But it survived in Australia. So this is a table taken from NCERT uh, again, and this table is very much important because all this. Uh, Places are important because it has been mentioned in NCERT. So the very first one is Mehargar. Mehargar was one of the first village in Pakistan. So here, wheat and barley and sheep and goat were first domesticated. And then Koldi Hawa is famous for rice cultivation. The very first rice was cultivated here. This is in UP. Then Mahagara is very adjacent to Koldi Hawa. This is also in UP. Then Gufkaral is in Kashmir near to Burjaham. These are famous for your wheat and lentils, then pit house and dog, cattle, sheep, etc. Then Chirand is uh, a site in near Chhapra in Bihar. Okay, this is famous for wheat, green gram, etc. Then Halur is a site of Andhra Pradesh and Payampalli is a site of Andhra Pradesh again. So you should go through all these also. See what what was found where. So this is also important table. Taken from NCRT, so you should be remembering all these names. Now come to this point: Neolithic Revolution. What was Neolithic Revolution? As I said, the temperature of the Earth increased due due to that uh, there was increase in the number of grasses like uh, wheat, barley, and other grasses also. So that led to development of agriculture as well as uh, domestication of animal. So some of the features I have written here. Uh, so human for the first time started living a sedentary life that is a settled life and tools were more refined now polished tools were made sickles and axes with handles were made then cultivation and agriculture developed knowledge of cropping season developed and domestication of sheep goat and cattle gradually developed okay 
so these these were all the features of agrarian revolution or neolithic revolution then domestication of seeds also happened the good quality of seed they were kept uh, in store for sowing in a particular period that is called domestication then wheel also developed during this period the invention of wheel happened during neolithic period and that led to ports for storage and carts also for transportation and later on a lot of development happened due to wheel so the uh, due to this the population of humanity grew a lot so this term this uh, agricultural revolution or neolithic revolution was termed by gordon child so gordon child and this i have taken from a book by the name the wonder that was india so now try to understand why this is so important it is more important that than the industrial revolution because this is the revolution which led to the development of civilization so why is invention of farming important here we can see see surplus food due to farming we had surplus food as we had surplus food we have stable food okay that increased our population and increase in population led to labor specialization there were a lot of people who were available to do different type of jobs apart from farming so that led to labor specialization and that led to civilization advancement so had there been no farming there had been no food surplus and there had been no civilization and that is why this neolithic revolution is so important and you will see that after this neolithic revolution takes place around uh, say 8000 bc so after that what happens there uh, emerges civilization in egypt then in sumerian uh, civilization in the tigris and euphrates okay that is also called mesopotamian civilization and the indus valley civilization so all those civilizations came into win after neolithic revolution and that is why it is very much important so at last there has been two sites uh, given in ncert those are very much important so you should be knowing one is mehargarh and one is daud ali hadin in mehargarh uh, it is located near the fertile plain of bolan pass in pakistan then it is earliest village uh, where the indus valley civilization will gradually develop then wheat and barley was first cultivated there and sheep and goat were first domesticated their remains of a square rectangular houses sun baked uh, made by sun baked uh, bricks have been found so these are all the information for mehargarh then dao jali hadin near garo hills in brahmaputra valley stone tools are found here uh, motor pestles uh, are also found this suggests that people were growing grains and preparing food from it and jadeite which is which was brought from china has also been found here and fossil woods have been found the wood which uh, become hard due to uh, time okay and pottery has been also found here so these are important sand, uh, sites you should try to locate these site on the map it will help you so the next video will be on indus valley civilization wherein we will discuss indus valley civilization so thank you thanks for watching please like share and subscribe if you like this video and give your feedback in the comment whether we should continue this series or not okay if you like this series then uh, if you like this video then please tell us whether we should continue this or not okay so thank you thanks for watching